Hey, Jeff here from Ideal Grain Automotive Detailing and Care on a very cold January day, and we are gonna review the GearWrench Professional Diagnostic Dongle. I had asked GearWrench if they could provide one to me uh, because there are basically no independent reviews of this online. The few that I could find were compensated, um, and I wanted to review their product. I thought it'd be pretty neat. Uh, they didn't want to send me one, and after they watch this video, they're probably gonna be pretty glad about that. All right. So. The first thing I want to tell you about gear wrench diagnostics is this is a one-time purchase tool in that it comes with updates forever. Um, however, you can never resell this tool. Uh, it comes with this registration card with a code on it. And uh, once you make an account and register it, that's it. You can never give this tool to anybody else. You can never resell it. Uh, that's it. It's for you only. The first thing I found when I got it was I had to update a lot of different things. And it seems like there are some new updates available now. I'm gonna not download them because the first thing was I had to do about half an hour of massive updates on my uh, tablet here to make this work. Secondly, I don't know if this comes across in video well, but uh, the app here scaled on an iPad looks pretty terrible. The icons are squished, the text is not, uh, I don't know, it just it just doesn't look right. It looks like that it was like squished to fit the screen rather than scaled appropriately to fit the screen. We'll go ahead and we'll get our dongle plugged into the OBD port in this vehicle. And we're gonna get to what I think is probably the worst part of this tool, to be honest. And that is the scan time. Um, when you're buying diagnostic tools, you're buying them for the express purpose of improving your diagnostics and, and reducing time that you're spending doing that, those diagnostics. So we'll put our key in the on position here. Maybe we'll turn the fan off here. And we will begin a scan. And uh, you can just keep an eye on the clock there while we wait for this to happen. Now, what I'm going to tell you is it's going to sit here for a little while and then it's going to pop up and say, hey, we couldn't find the VIN. Even though I know that it can read the VIN, uh, it's not going to. So I'm going to have to get up and uh, go find a VIN plate, probably up front there, and manually type it in after I've waited two minutes for it to ask me for the VIN. Maybe. By the way, I scanned somebody's Suzuki X90 the other day, wouldn't do it at all. It just did this forever. Um, wouldn't prompt me even for a VIN, it just wouldn't even scan it. That was a 96 vehicle, so it should have been OBD2 and compatible. Just didn't do it. Um, takes equally as long on our Mazda CX-5, though it does find the VIN on that. Still waiting. Maybe. I'm not really even sure that I'm gonna continue this video any further because this is my experience that I've had with the gear wrench. Oh, there we go, finally. VIN is not recognized. Please input it manually. Thankfully, it's saved in recent history because I've manually inputted it before. Um, okay. Now we're presented with VW or VW2 diagnostics. Which one is it? I don't know. Uh, they don't tell you. I've tried VW and it does some things. Let's try VW2 since it doesn't tell us which one is the correct one to use. You'd think based on the VIN. Oh, no, I have to download a, a package to do that. Let's try the other one. No, I don't need to open the hood. It says for models newer than 2019. It knows that this is not a 2019. This is really my biggest gripe with, with this is that it, it has no context. It presents me with a lot of options that are not supported on this vehicle, especially the special functions, a lot of the bi-directional functions. It'll present you with those, uh, even though it's not compatible with the vehicle. 
be a big time waster to go in there and think you have to perform a procedure to find out that it isn't available. By the way, in the time that we've told it to start the diagnostic, it has not actually begun a scan yet. It's just thinking about beginning the scan right now. So we'll wait. Oh, there we go. We have to tell it that it's a Golf made after 1998 and not a Volkswagen Bora, which was never sold in this country. Okay, can fast scam after 2005. Well, it knows it's not a 2005. Uh, why is it even offering me that? Uh, full system diagnosis, uh, diagnosis or automatic scan? Which do I pick? I assume automatic scan does the right thing. So we'll try that. Now we're actually beginning the scan. This is why I have a problem with this tool. There are other tools available. A friend of mine has a uh, dedicated, you know, tablet with a dongle kind of thing on it from a company called Top Done. Um, and they're about 300 to $350 and can do more controls. And while they don't include, you know, lifetime updates, does GearWrench include lifetime updates, really? Is GearWrench going to be a, supporting this product in three or four years, or uh, are they going to walk away from it and no longer offer updates? We don't know. In addition, as we wait for our continued scan here, um, in addition, as we wait for our scan, this software and that dongle isn't actually made by GearWrench. It's made by a company called Xtool and licensed by GearWrench. I've looked at uh, Xtool's website and uh, they just seem to be sort of shady, questionable import tools that make big promises and the software looks exactly the same with some color differences. Um, overall, still not impressed. By the way, we're still scanning. Oh, it's scanning for all-wheel drive electronics on a non-all-wheel drive car. Should know that from the VIN. Maybe you could see this, but instrument cluster, weirdly uh, lowercase. Like, we can't even proofread here. Come on. Central locking system, L and S. Oh, no, it skips that because it doesn't have it, even though it does. I don't know. This manual seats, doesn't need seat adjustment. This is a car from 1998. There is no navigation. Why are you even scanning it? And I might add, this is throwing faults here. I can't actually click and see what any of these are until the full scan has completed. And there we go, our scan is complete and it's thrown faulty on three of them. Why would it do that? Let's take a look. Um, we can see under our comfort system, um, it's gonna throw a few for my side view mirrors that are uh, cranky. But just going into that, we're gonna wait for the spinning wheel of death for a few seconds. And it's gonna think. Okay. So uh, we can read information, see what's going on. Uh, read DTC so we can get codes. Here we go. Um, implausible signal for central locking. I'm not sure what that means. I have good working lock modules and the key works on all of them. Uh, yes, my mirrors are problematic. I don't care about my side view mirrors, uh, but at least I can read them. That's neat. Oh, we have to go back to the diagnostics. There's a loading time for that. Why does it say our uh, engine electronics? Uh, Parametric pressure sensor, signal too high. The engine's not running. It's not even looking at that sensor. Um, airbag, why is it faulty? Supply voltage, signal too low. It's because the car's not running. The airbag's not, not activated. I don't know here. It, it knows that, but it throws codes. So we're going to exit the automatic scan, which is a risk because if we have to do it again, it's going to take all day. Going back, we still have to enter this again. And let's try going into our special functions. And uh, we can do a few things uh, here. Let's see what is available to us. Electronic pump evacuator. Nope, nothing there. So it knows what car we have, 
but it's still gonna prompt me for everything here. Oh, I can tell that it's a Volkswagen. Is ABS bleeding available, available in this vehicle? Automatic detection. We'll wait. And wait. And wait. It needs the VIN. Can't save it, can't grab it from the most recently views. Let me see if I have it, have it saved here somewhere. There we go, saved it from the clipboard. Can I paste it? I can't paste the VIN. This is no longer worthwhile to me. I'm done with this tool, it's being returned. Gear wrench, you guys gotta do better. This is, this is not useful. If you're a hobbyist, you can tolerate this, but for not a lot more money, you could buy some other import units that are much faster, that offer more functions, uh, and don't have the gear wrench logo squished at the top of the screen. So in conclusion, buy something else.